On July 19, 2019, the world lost an extraordinary acting talent, Rutger Hauer, who passed away at the age of 75. Certainly, he will be remembered best for his role in another Ridley Scott-directed classic, Blade Runner, playing the desperate and murderous replicant Roy Batty. But Hauer was no stranger to the Alien series. In fact, his contribution to it is quite significant. Since the very first official Alien Day in 2016, Audible has been releasing productions taking place in the Alien Extended Universe, with the very first production in this new tradition being the audio drama adaptation of Tim Lebin's novel Alien Out of the Shadows. This story takes place between the events of Alien and Aliens, seeing the return of the desperate, murderous android Ash, voiced by Rutger Hauer in the Audible production. The general premise of Out of the Shadows is that Ripley wasn't left drifting in space for 57 years by pure chance and bad luck, but it was Ash, whose consciousness was uploaded into the Mother System, surviving along with Ripley in the Narcissus, who altered the escape shuttle's course in search for further xenomorph specimens. The story, no doubt, requires a little bit of suspension of disbelief on the audience's part, though the events of Out of the Shadows wouldn't be anywhere close to the most outrageous, unbelievable story to come from a franchise's extended universe. You can see it as just an excuse to get another story where Ripley has to join another crew and fight more aliens again, and sure, there's truth to that, but the purest kind of truth the story comes to is that of the characters. This was an opportunity to re-examine these characters just a little bit more, and I find there to be a tremendous amount of value in that. Out of the Shadows is about unfinished business, about the figurative ghosts that haunt the survivors of the Nostromo. Ash and Ripley are each put into a position where they're required to evaluate their own purposes in the wake of their encounter with the alien. It has forever changed them. A large part of Ripley's role in Out of the Shadows is the grief and guilt she feels over realizing she's left her daughter, Amanda, behind, breaking the promise she made to arrive home before her 11th birthday. Aside from one scene in Aliens, which wasn't even included in the original theatrical cut of the film, this aspect to her character hadn't really been explored, at least not specifically, though you could argue that the entirety of Aliens at least develops the character from that angle thematically. But to have this whole separate story, where it's really front and center with the character, the sorrow and failure she feels about letting her daughter down, the repeated nightmares she experiences because of it, and her learning that Ash was responsible for this, it all really heightens the drama. And it gives us another glimpse into a great character that we all know and love from the series. But Ripley has always had a fair deal of development over the course of the series, and this is all just a little bit more to chew on, while the biggest treat and surprise of the story, I feel, is what it does with Ash. The main takeaway of Ash from the film Alien is that he's the traitor of the group, working to keep the alien alive the whole time. He is ultimately the personification of the company and its interests, a tool of Weyland yutani a corporate giant that couldn't possibly care about the lives of the Nostromo's crew over the opportunity to bring back a specimen of this rare organism. We learn, however, in Ash's chilling final moments, that he has a personal admiration for the creature. This admiration and obsession is taken to new levels in Out of the Shadows. Ash believes that in retrieving a xenomorph specimen, he'll be fulfilling some higher purpose, and it would basically justify his entire reason for existing. He stops at nothing to see this goal through, killing whoever stands in the way, willing to kill Ripley, though at the same time he's also developing an admiration for her, even a kind of affection, where it feels like this skewed, perverse Beauty and the Beast story. In the original novel, this is depicted purely through text, as Ash simply lives inside the shuttle's operating system. But for the audio drama, obviously a voice actor was needed. And who better than Roy Batty himself to take on this new form of Ash? It's a wonderful performance from Hauer, and it's hard to pinpoint the specifics of this performance, but it really does feel like he's this robot, slowly discovering his own kind of humanity, and lamenting that his existence is limited, and acts out of desperation and fear instead of through a cold, calculating, collating consciousness. This isn't any kind of mimicry of the Ian Holm portrayal, who was absolutely brilliant in his role, it should go without saying, but in this different take on the character, Rutger Hauer makes the role his own. It very much hits similar notes to his Blade Runner performance, and really ties together the themes we've seen in that film and the Ridley Scott-directed Alien films as well when it comes to the android characters. In April of 2016, upon the release of the audio drama, Rutger Hauer spoke to Den of Geek regarding the challenges he faced in taking on the role and in committing to a purely vocal performance. He had the following to say. Ash's ambition is to bring something home to his makers, but he's an artificial intelligence. He's a memory stick or something like that. He travels. 
I want to tell the audience just enough so they can take it on. I don't want to tell too much. So I'm always dancing between that, and we did a lot of work on cutting down things. Ash speaks a funny language. Of course, I'm not English, and I'm a bit of an alien myself. That gives you a freedom, I guess, when it comes into play and you have to find a form for it. In film, I can use a lot of my voice. Not everything has to be articulated so you can hear it. It's really different. In audio, the voice is all they have. It's the ultimate illusion to not have the visuals and just reading the audio, trying to create this structure of words so the listeners will understand you're in space. There's a line in this, of course it's not new, but there's a line where Ash says, When I imagine looking at the Earth from this far away, I feel something. As you probably know, he thinks there's something happening with him while he's on this long trip. He's a mind made by some doll maker. Then he evolves in a way, and he feels loneliness, which makes no sense. He's a program. You're playing an illusion, and in many ways everyone I play is an illusion, but this one, Ash, is as close as you can get to an illusion. That was my trouble with it, but he's a great character. He's a pixel character. He's a computer talking, playing chess games. And he says he never lost, and he fails at some point, which is a disappointment, but wonderful. It ends in a very wonderful way, this whole episode. I think it's very well written. It was an absolute joy to see Rutger Hauer make his contribution to the Alien series, and without a doubt, he's the highlight of Out of the Shadows. In lending his talent and his recognizable name to the project, I think Hauer brought a lot of legitimacy to this first audio drama. I truly believe that his involvement caused many to check it out and give it a chance when they may not have otherwise. Now we're four audible audio dramas in, in as many Alien days, and we've already come so far as to experience the unproduced William Gibson Alien 3 screenplay as their most recent production, which I loved, and especially appreciated the involvement of stars Michael Bean and Lance Henriksen. But a hugely ambitious project like that doesn't just happen overnight. Surely with that first production, Rutger Hauer paved the way for such things to come. So as we say goodbye to this great actor, I wanted to express my gratitude for the credibility he brought to the extended universe, which is full of great stories told in different ways, and different takes on our beloved characters such as what Mr. Hauer brought to Ash. As an Alien fan, I'm grateful for that, and in general, as a fan of film, I'm grateful for all the excellent roles he brought to the screen over the years in his career. They will not be lost like tears in rain, but cherished and remembered forever. So today we salute and remember the other Ash, Rutger Hauer. An absolute legend. Rest in peace. Do you have a favorite Rutger Hauer role? Please comment below and share your memories of this great actor. As always, I'd like to thank you very much for watching today. I really appreciate it. And much thanks as well goes to William Jutani executives Emurik and Lady Anne, part of the Patreon Hive. And thanks to all members who make this channel possible. I'll see you all again soon as we journey further into the world of all things alien. Until then, this is Alien Theory, signing off.